Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at the MSI V850-P Wi-Fi. Now, for those of you that are interested, actually, if you are looking at saving a bit of money and you're looking at more of the sort of budget end of the AM5 platform, this potentially might be a good shout. Now, there is actually another motherboard which is essentially identical to this one in the MSI lineup, which is the B850 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi. Now, with the Gaming Plus Wi-Fi, it gets even more confusing because there's three different versions of it. There's a PZ, which is the rear connect one. There's also a version 2, which looks different altogether. And there's a version 1. But all of them share the same model number, which is kind of stamped on the bottom underneath here. So it's like the MS7E56 or something. So this particular version is the version 2.1. So it's essentially the Gaming Plus just modified to suit a particular budget. Although, weirdly, it isn't actually much cheaper. This one at the moment here in the UK retails for somewhere in around the £170 mark, whereas the Gaming Plus version is around about £180 to £190, depending where you're shopping. So there isn't a great deal between them, and arguably, if you don't like the Gaming Plus kind of logos and the flashiness around it, with the odd colours on the heat sinks, then potentially this might be a better choice for you. But in today's video, we're going to go through, do an unboxing, show you what you get, talk about some of the features, and then you can work out whether or not this is going to be suitable for your next semi-budget build. So first we're looking at the packaging, obviously as we've said already, Pro B850-P Wi-Fi, I'll probably just class it as the B850P for now on. Uh, ready for AIPC if that is something that you're interested in and it has Lightning Gen 5 support built in and also support for Ryzen 9000 series desktop processors straight out of the box. And obviously, it goes without saying, it is using the AMD B850 chipset, which in itself is one of those kind of weird things where effectively it is a B650 kind of on steroids or just modified slightly. There isn't really a great deal of difference. So ultimately, I would say if you are looking at building a new PC and you don't specifically need PCI Express Gen 5 everywhere or as much as possible, then it might even be worth looking at a B650 or even a B650E, especially now as they are ending their actual lifespan. So they are stopping producing them now and manufacturers are being kind of encouraged to start integrating the B850 chipset rather than the older B650 or B650E. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's take a look on the back of the box. It goes over the uh, usual suspects. So some of the key features, it has a 12 plus two plus one Duet rail power system. You've got five gigabit LAN, Easy M.2 Shield Frozzers. You've also got the Easy M.2 Clips. Those are excellent. Also Gen 5 support, Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. Comes with a pre-installed IO Shield and has a front USB Type-C. Also gives you some specs there and also a layout of the rear IO. Next, we'll take a look at what we actually get included in the box. Now, obviously, motherboard that is included and you get things like the European Union Regulatory Notice if you're in the EU. You also get the quick install guide, which uh, basically just has QR codes. I do miss a good manual. Also comes with a single lonely SATA cable. I guess most people probably won't be using those these days. Also comes with a very interesting little key, hex key. This is for actually installing the easy latch connectors for the M.2 drives, of which there are three of those included out of the box. Also, something quite important is your Wi-Fi stroke Bluetooth antenna. So this supports Bluetooth 5.4. Potentially, it might be 5.5 by the time you read this or watch this. So, yeah, Bluetooth is one of those evolving technologies. But, yeah, it's a decent one. And it's got the kind of inverted SMA push fit connectors, which you see very commonly on Wi-Fi 7 antennas these days. And also, as well, I would say, make sure you look after this. If you're not planning on using Wi-Fi, just... Make sure you keep this somewhere safe because surprisingly, these Wi-Fi 7 antennas are actually surprisingly expensive. If you do need to replace one, you will be looking at somewhere in the region of about 15 to 20 pounds if you can find one over on AliExpress. And if you buy them in the UK or in your place of origin, then it's going to be substantially more expensive. I've seen them on eBay for kind of 30, 40 pounds, which is incredible considering the overall price of the motherboard. So let's go ahead and take a tour of the motherboard and we'll start in the top corner. So you've got two 8-pin EPS connectors. Don't worry if your power supply only has one, it's fine, you can just use one. You have the two optionally, so for depending on which processor you're using. Realistically with this, with a 12 plus 2 plus 1 VRM, it's probably going to be fine with most processors. There has actually been a recent review over on Hardware Unboxed covering basically all of the lower-end B850 motherboards. So if you want to see how it 
fares in terms of VRM and with very high-end processors, I would suggest you take a look there. Realistically, I think for me, most people would probably be using a board like this, probably with like a 7600, a 9600, maybe a 9700. You can get away with the 9900. Some of the higher, higher end X3D chips, you might find it struggling a little bit with VRM temps as you get towards kind of all day rendering, that kind of thing. But in general, I think most CPUs are gonna be absolutely fine across the AM5 range. Also in this area, we've got this massive heatsink over the VRM area and also at the top there, nice big VRM heatsinks there. Also in the middle there, you've got your AM5 socket, pretty standard stuff. Moving along a little bit further at the top, so we've got our CPU fan header. Then next to that, we've got our pump header. That one's color coded gray, just to kind of differentiate a little bit. All of the fan headers on here will be PWM and DC compatible, and will take up to two amps on the actual lines themselves. So yeah, if you wanna see how to set up fans on an MSI motherboard, we've done various videos. I'll try and link them in the video description and maybe in one of the pop-up cards. Next up, we've got our addressable RGB. So these are Gen 2 ports on here. You've also got underneath that the diagnostic D-LED. These are invaluable. I do love these. I think all boards should have them as standard because it's a lot easier to use that than it is to use a BIOS beep code, which generally you don't get a BIOS beep speaker these days. So it's actually nice to have that. So that gives you the CPU, DRAM, VGA, and boot LEDs, depending on what the problem is with the system. If all the lights go out, it means your system's A-OK. -okay. Although there have been some very odd instances where people have got completely fine working systems, but one of the LEDs remains lit. Uh, there's no real rhyme or reason to that. Generally, it goes after a BIOS update, but yeah, it is a little bit strange at times and a little bit disconcerting. Underneath that, we've got three headers for fans there, so system fan headers. I think it's actually quite a nice idea to have three there because if you've got a ATX chassis, which likely you will because it's an ATX motherboard, if you've got three fans up front, which a lot of people tend to these days, and if they're not daisy chained, at least you've got three individual fan headers to plug in all of those at once, which I think is a yeah, pretty good idea. Next up, you've got your RAM slots, so you've got four RAM slots there. At the moment, at the time of recording, this supports up to 8200 mega transfers per second. It is going to be dependent somewhat on your actual processor you're using. Some processors work better than others. Some have better memory controllers, so whether or not you can use all four sticks at the same time is open for debate. Generally, if you use four sticks, you may find yourself having to reduce the frequencies, generally to getting closer to the JDEX speed, so like 5600, that kind of thing but potentially you can put in here what, 256 gigs of RAM, which is uh, yeah should be enough for most people. I think realistically this sort of price point, more budget orientated systems, it's gonna be 32 or 64 gigs probably at the max. Moving down underneath that 24 pin main power connector and underneath that we've got our front panel USB type C connector. That is a five gigabit per second port. Underneath that we've got four SATA ports and also a 90 degree angle USB 3.0 type A header. And underneath that, you can just see the beginnings of an M.2 connector. We'll take a look, closer look at M.2 and PCI Express very shortly. Obviously just up here, you've got the Pro Series heatsink over the top of the B850 chipset. So next let's take a look at the PCI Express arrangement and also the M.2. So we'll start off with M.2. So at the top here, we've got the primary M.2. So this is a PCI Express Gen 5 times four and also it comes with the easy latch quick release. So just squeeze the end part in and it releases. So you can take it off. Uh, it's a reasonable heat sink, a decent chunk of metal, quite heavy. And also we've got the latch there to secure the drives into place. Uh, you can, if you want to swap that out for one of the kind of nipple based ones, the spring loaded ones, that's entirely up to you. Also as well, if you want to remove this to use your own custom heat sinks, you're more than welcome to do so. Looks so like this is going to be PCI Express Gen 5 times 4 at the max. It is going to be ultimately down to what processor you're using. Some of the 800 series processors or the 7000 series might not have the full PCI Express Gen 5 connectivity. It's going to be down to the processor. Most of the X range are going to be absolutely fine. So moving down underneath that, we've got the next one. So there is a M.2 here. So this is going to be PCI Express Gen 4 times 4. And then last of all, this one down here is PCI Express Gen 4 times 2. So a little bit of a shame to see that's only a times 2. So that is going to limit your bandwidth slightly. But I think for most people, one to two drives is probably going to be more than enough in these kind of lower end motherboards. 
So that is the M.2, only three slots on here. When it comes to PCI Express, so our top slot here, so PCI Express Gen 5 times 16. Also, you've got the extended latch on there to make graphics cards a little bit easier to remove. That's uh, pretty cool. That's fully wired for times 16 support. Underneath that, we've got three PCI Express 16X sized slots, but they're actually wired for less than that. So this top one here is actually from the chipset. That's PCI Express Gen 3 times one. The one in the middle, that's gonna be from the CPU. That is also PCI Express Gen 4 times four. And at the bottom, we've got another one from the chipset, which is PCI Express Gen 3 times one. Now for this bit, I'm actually gonna to have to hold the board so I can see what it is I'm actually talking about. So when it comes to the IO at the front, so you've got your front panel IO connection. Next to that, you've got the speaker connection. Above that, you've got a RGB connection. So you've got three of those in total. You've also got a chassis intrusion switch. And also there's another PWM fan header. Next to that, we've got another USB 3.0 type A header. So if you've got a case, which needs two, you've got the 90 degree one there and the normal one there. Then you've got your USB 2.0 front panel headers or rear panel headers, to, if you're looking old school. You've got two of those, so another four ports potential. You've also got at the bottom there an additional PCIe Express power plug for eight pin. At the moment, we don't really seem to be having any real great use for that. I'm guessing at some point in the future, there will be devices coming out which will require a little bit of extra juice at the bottom there. Maybe they'll use it to power some of the PCI Express slots. So you can possibly maybe have a graphics card which fits into maybe the primary slot and is a really low power one, but not quite low enough. So maybe like an 80 or 90 watts one. So it just can draw an extra bit of power from the bottom. Honestly, I'm not too sure. It's a new thing which really hasn't been implemented in any great way yet. So we'll see what happens there. Next up, you've got a COM port. You've got your J dash, which is for the MSI dashboard, which is very rarely seen anywhere outside of Japan or Taiwan, I think. Also, you've got another addressable RGB. So that's three pin, five volts. You've also got a 12 volt RGB as well. So if you've got some old 12 volt stuff knocking around, you can connect it up there. And finally, along this edge, you've got the front panel audio connection. The audio on this is Realtek ALC897, which is fine. It isn't anything outrageous. It will support up to 7.1 outputs over the optical speed if on the back. Although the connections on the back, they aren't great, very limited when it comes to audio, but I think that is something which we're seeing a lot more now on modern motherboards. Other things of note, so you have got the battery just underneath the graphics card slot, which is a little bit annoying if you need to do a CMOS reset, although there is a handy button on the back to allow you to do that, so it isn't the end of the world. And also for those of you wanting to use an external TPM, there is a TPM port just underneath the heatsink there. So I think that's pretty much it for the main board itself. Let's take a look at the rear IO. So on the rear IO, it's a relatively Spartan affair. There's not a great deal going on here and you've only got a total of eight USB ports, including the two type C's. So yeah, USB is a little bit minimal on here. Effectively, this board is designed at well, pros, hence the name. So it's more of a kind of office workstation thing where you're generally not gonna have a huge amount of USBs, but anyway. So on the far left hand side, you've got two buttons there. One is for the BIOS flashback utility. And also there is a CMOS reset, which is actually sitting a little bit prouder than the other one. So that's pretty handy. You also got an HDMI port. Now this is actually one of the other significant differences between this board and also the Gaming Plus. The Gaming Plus has a display port as an output, whereas this one has HDMI. So if it comes down to, you're maybe gonna use onboard graphics and you wanna use a display port monitor or you wanna use a HDMI monitor, that is gonna be one of those things which is gonna make you decide between the two boards. Most people I think will use a standard graphics card, so it's kind of irrelevant anyway, but I just thought I'd make note of it. When it comes to the USB port, so you've got a type C there, so that's a 10 gigabit per second, and also above it, you've got a type A, both of those 10 gigabit per second. Then you've got a whole bank there of USB 2.0s, so four of those in total. Then you've got your 5G LAN. You've also got another five gigabit per second, so that's color coded in blue. And then there's another 10 gigabit USB type C connection. Also, you've got Wi-Fi 7, as we've already mentioned. So Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. Now it doesn't actually say what type of connection this is or what type of card it is. It just says it's a pre-installed M.2e type key on the board. So I've tried to open up and have a look inside. There's no obvious markings on it. I'm guessing it's gonna be an AMD based one. It's called the Flawless Wi-Fi 7. So Flawless as a brand used to be a thing, I think, but 
Anyway, I've got no obvious markings, but essentially, yes, it's Wi-Fi 7, supports the 6 gigahertz band, 320 hertz or megahertz or whatever it is, the bandwidth. It basically supports Wi-Fi 7, so yeah, you haven't got any issues there. When it comes to audio, line in and also your microphone in and you have your optical speed if for the 7.1 audio. So there we go, there is a look at the MSI Pro B850-P Wi-Fi. I think it's actually quite an interesting board, although it does seem to me that the chipset itself is a little bit boring. We've had the B650, the B650E, and also obviously the X670 and X670E. So there's already been a lot of really nice motherboards for the particular platform. I'm guessing, obviously, as those boards are becoming less and less in production, this is going to be one of the sort of thing that people are going to be going to. Personally, myself, I think I would probably look for maybe a deal on X670E, such as the Gaming Plus, which I've actually used in the PC behind me. It's been a fantastic board. The only thing it really lacks is the Wi-Fi 7. But other than that, it's an absolutely fantastic board. Price-wise, I would love to see this come in a little bit cheaper, but it does seem that all motherboards, especially the AMD ones, the B850s, they do seem to start at a slightly higher price, I guess. The technology, the bandwidth, the chipset, etc., it's all starting to mount up. Just be nice to see this come in under or at £150. I think that would make a lot of sense for the price it is. And also, it would then replace a lot of the other models in the B650 range quite easily without that added price hike. Anyway, let me know what you think about this one in the comments section. Massive shout out as well to Dave Aitken, who actually has loaned me this to take a look at. Funny story, well, funny to me, uh, on our Discord, we have an eBay bargains bot. It came up and it seems that we were both going for it at the same time. There was only one for sale and he managed to bag this for, it was supposed to be 99.99 because it was on offer anyway. And then there was a 20 pounds discount code. So I think Dave picked this up for 79.99, which is an absolute steal. And I am a little bit gutted, but anyway, it was nice to take a look at it and uh, hopefully whatever PC Dave puts this in, the uh, intended user will get a lot of benefit out of it. I think it's a nice looking board. It fits in with most design ethics. It is a little bit reflective on camera, unfortunately, but the fact that it's got a little bit of silver, a little bit of white and black means it can fit in with kind of pretty much any color theme, but not wholly one way or the other. Anyway, I'm waffling now. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, smash the like button. If you wanna see more content like this on a daily basis, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the all notifications. That way you've been notified of all future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.